Oh, sh**. A new Venom trailer just dropped. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me get this straight. Big black horse c and the tentacles? Mother of God. Smoke coming out of the top of this building. They called in and got firefighters here. Firefighters are still here mopping up and trying to figure out exactly what caused this early morning fire. Hello, every pony. Welcome to the Craft Mask, home of badass custom action figures and toys. <laughs> You're over 30 and still want a toy? Correct, madam. I am your host, Charlie, extraterrestrial equestrian enthusiast, and the voice in your mama's head. Today, I'm celebrating one of Marvel's greatest anti heroes. Not necessarily the new movie, because I haven't seen it yet by turning this innocent little pony into a brain-eating alien menace. And I'm gonna make you watch. Are you celebrating, or are you just toasting on the algorithm, Charlie? I resent that remark, sir. I don't have to prove I'm a long-time Venom fan, but I will anyway. <laughs> Behold! This is my Toy Biz model kit that I bought, built, and bemoaned over ever since 1996. Or was it seven? I can't quite remember. Regardless, suck it, non-believers! On the other hand, I have no proof that I am not a brony. And what are your feelings about that, Mr. Horse? No, sir, I don't like it. But you tell me, what's more entertaining? Straight up Venom Horse, like I originally planned? Or this abomination? You see, in the name of comedy, I'm willing to sacrifice it all. Even my ponyless search history. But enough horsing around. Thank you, one person! Let's get on with the show! First, we have to gut this horse. Eyes, lungs, pancreas. All that extra stuff is just weighing it down. Plus, there might be some useful pieces inside I can scavenge for another project. Like this nifty little motor, and a gearbox, and a soundboard that makes horse noises. Okay, for real, some of these parts are just gonna go in a box forever. But the principle remains. For a sec, I thought I might not be able to salvage the electronics without cutting some wires, but I only had to clip away a smidge of plastic from the neck. In hindsight, this was a terrible misprioritization. The wires could be soldered back together. The neck might not be so easy to fix, but I suck at soldering, so that was the choice I made. I promised to myself I wouldn't overcomplicate this project, so I'm not doing any electronic work on the Venomi. Early in the process, I decided he would be a she. A lady. <laughs> Canonically, girl symbiotes are never as muscular as the guys, so that saves me a bit of sculpting. Yep, gonna skip the muscle sculpting, because it's canonical. No other reason. It's not like I'm still making this damn video a day before the movie releases. I want to spend as little time back here as possible. Nay means nay. With the shell empty, I clipped off and sanded down any tabs that limited the toy's motion so I can have it as poseable as possible. And do this. Oh, they took my freaking kidney. I knew the head would be significantly heavier once modded, so I removed as much unnecessary material as I could. I then tightened the fittings for the neck, but I also lengthened the slot in the body to allow the neck to swivel farther up and down, but still be able to hold a pose. There was a bunch more internal stuff I had to cut down and get rid of to facilitate more neck movement. Head movement! Ah, it is you. Yes! Yes! Now I can finalize the neck without fear. Yeah. Yeah. 
Originally, I just wanted to give the Venomi a hinged upper neck, but it just wasn't working out. I always try to avoid using my Technic joints, because they are brilliant and always in high demand, and expensive, but the stuff I was scavenging from other random toys just wasn't cutting it. Well, sir, I don't like it. Why couldn't this just work? Probably because of this idea, Charlie. I don't know what to tell you. The dime a dozen fidget joints are still coming in clutch, though. For the sake of time, I resisted the urge to add ball joints to all of the legs. But the one bent leg was actually nearly like an inch longer than the other which was bugging the ever-loving bejesus out of me. So, for just that one, I made an exception. I went through a couple of iterations, but ultimately went with the simplest, most open version of it. I'd normally try my best to hide a joint better, but I knew the figure would be painted up so dark and glossy that the joint would probably not even look visible to the naked eye. It's my favorite kind of eye. I could have left the joint out completely, but... With an articulated hand, the Venomi can now do some basic gesticulations. Not too impressive, but from what I've seen, it's something actual MLP ponies rarely ever do with more than one hand anyway. Makes sense. Otherwise, they'd fall over. If you weren't around at the time, it's kind of impossible to describe how f***ing everywhere MLP was in the 2010s, but I assure you, you could not engage in media of any kind without seeing them. And I just had to point it out because I caught a glimpse of the newer MLP stuff and how the mighty have fallen. 11 trillion hentai images online couldn't dampen the friendship magic, but this oh, that's not an uncanny valley. That's a grand uncanny canyon right there stuff of nightmares. Considering that, I moved on to the face feeling pretty confident I couldn't make anything quite that bad. And hey, I scored a 3D pen at the local thrift shop. I felt like Macklemore leaving that place. Glorious! It's a cheaper quality pen, so it won't be doing much fine work, but for filling and bridging, it's a great workhorse. I'm in desperate need of a new host. And it showed up just in time. The extruded filament really helped me keep certain parts thin and lightweight, where a manually soldered thermoplastic would have probably been thicker and heavier. Lucky me, the hooves are already too thin for carving. Before that, I was able to use targeted heat to soften the pony's plastic enough to reshape it. The whole project was pretty time crunched, so I was looking to avoid sculpting anything extra with slow curing materials like epoxy putty. Lego Technic pieces are beautifully tough and exactly manufactured, though occasionally they are tight enough that they need some lube. One day, I swear, I will replace all the parts you see here with ones that actually match the color of the mouth. But YouTube isn't paying for itself yet, so I use what I had. The jaw went from test shape to final product so damn fast too. I'm just loving the 3D pen. I'm glad it saved me so much time because while I have used some paper clip bits to get an idea for spacing, ultimately it was polymer clay that would make up the teeth. And I made them all just a little bit too big. So I had to grind them down and then use UV top coat to smoothen them out again. I can't find a problem. I'll make the problem! I figured I could give the Venomi a range of expressions with its different shaped eyes. So I devised a plan to magnetize her eyes and put some swivels on her ears. For the ears, I thought the trickiest part would be getting the concave underneath to match the curve of the head but somehow I just got lucky and it worked out with very little fuss. The real issue was finding a swivel. 
I just couldn't find any junk parts up to the task, so I had to dip into the sacred Lego stash yet again. On the other hand, I found a way to cheap out on the eyes. I anchored each eye to a small metal plate, so I only needed to place strong magnets in each eye socket. It's not like I'm taking her out on windy days, so a magnet for each eye is expensively unnecessary. The eyes themselves were cut from sheets of hot glue because the flexible material could be easily shaped to the contour of the head, and then braced with a much more rigid PLA filament. I had to apply some Mod Podge to smoothen out the eyes since I had to solder them slightly to release some of the stress of the new shapes that the bracing was holding them in. I threw together a quick little tongue made out of wires and oyamaru. It'll do for now, but I might come back to that in future and make it longer and gnarlier and slimier. Sorry, is that a party cannon in your pants or do you like the dirty talk? We interrupt this program for a special report. Hello friends, I'm Dr. Charlie, and I want to talk to you about sticky metamorphic oozes living parasitically on your person. Potentially millions of people suffer with this debilitating condition, but you don't have to be one of them. It's clinically proven that you can soothe the symptoms by subscribing to the Craft Mask YouTube channel. And even better, thanks to scientific advances, you can cure yourself of your wretched condition permanently as long as you're a patron of the Craft Mask Patreon. Magical wonders are to behold when you enter. You don't want people to think you have a sticky metamorphic ooze living parasitically on your person, do you? Your ticket to wellness is one subscription or donation away. Click that button today. SMOLPP is a real medical condition, but it's genetic. There's nothing you can do about it with medicine. Subscribing to the Craft Mask YouTube channel or to the Patreon is not a medical treatment. Even if it might make you and Charlie feel better, you don't have to consult a doctor before subscribing to either. If you do have a sticky metamorphic who's living parasitically on your person, you might want to try ivermectin, but I'm not a doctor, so don't take my word for it. Get your own doctor and speak to them. Well, there you have it, straight from the horse's mouth. I wanted a stable, movable base for the tail, but I still had to mind its weight. While the Gorilla Pod joint that I used here is more than strong enough to hold up a huge tail, hell, even the whole body, the rest of the body would not be able to support that weight. Without being able to widen her stance, the Venomi is a little top-heavy and uh, pretty unstable. Heh, <laughs> stable. Maybe one day I will add in ball joints to the thighs, but that's just too much for right now. In the meantime, my solution for a lightweight but voluminous tail was to just fake it with a gooey mesh. I finally found a use for all those twisty ties I hoarded from random Amazon orders and fashioned a mesh in the shape of a big plume. The next step was to drape it in a sheet of hot glue and then heat gun that bad boy. It was a process about as fun as it was messy and I wish it could have worked for the main two, but I had to take a more meticulous route for gooifying it by connecting each strand, which is fine. I had to do the same with the tail anyway. While the draped glue did give me a base of random shapes to work with, I was always going to have to curate it a little bit, because true random is pretty hard to fake, but completely random can look like trash. The same was doubly true for the body. After I laid down a texture layer of Mod Podge and Matte Medium, a combination that produces an inexplicably disgusting oatmeal-like substance, I set about drizzling hot glue on the Venomi. The mod medium mixture served two purposes. One was for texture, where the glue didn't land, and the other was so that if I really screwed up the glue drizzle, I could rip the glue off more easily and start again. Remember that toy biz kit I mentioned earlier? Remember when I was foreshadowing? The first time I assembled and painted that kit, I did it according to the box art. And I hated it. No sir, his butt's too smooth. The parts didn't fit well enough, nor were my painting skills clean enough to achieve that perfectly smooth texture. Nine-year-old me had never seen such bullshit. project was reboxed and put out of sight. Let us never speak of this again. Venom had a silky smooth texture when he first appeared in the comics, probably because it's easier to draw, and that was his most consistent look for years until one day someone in Hollywood said, F*** the cannon, and made a Venom all gooey and stringy and gross-like. As soon as I saw that first trailer for Spidey 3, I turned my room upside down to find that old Venom box because I had been touched by the muses. I hit that glue gun like Spidey hits them webs and at last I fell in love with a toy that had been silently killing my confidence as an artist for over a decade. Perfection, as they say, is the nemesis of completion. And now, ironically, at the 
dawn of yet another Spider-Man related trilogy, I'm continuing the tradition of gooey ass venoms with this here pony. The glue goo method is quick and fun, I like it. Am I a fraud artist? Is it a sloppy cheat? Should all art be painstaking and lengthy in its process? I don't care. You can't shame me for this because this is the least shameful way that anyone has ever coated a My Little Pony toy in sticky hot goo in all of human history. I'm doing just fine, thank you. In all seriousness, the glue drizzle technique is trickier than it looks to get it to look just right, so I'm putting up a short tutorial for just that part. After all the glue gooing, I sculpted up a venom symbol to replace the pony's tramp stamp. I was going to make it out of hot glue sheets originally too, but decided against that since I really wanted to have more projection, and meltable glue next to other meltable glue just sounded like a terrible idea. Incidentally, you can still melt polymer clays after they've been baked. I did not know this. Not wanting to re-sculpt a second one for our other side, I copied the original symbol with some Oyamaru and pressed some polymer clay into it. I did the sculpting and remolding on this little metal bowl because I need the symbol to fit around the curve of the Bonomi's leg, and it's safe in the oven. Once it was baked and cooled off, I melted the glue where it needed to go and used some Mod Podge to merge the edges, trying to get it to look as inlaid as possible without cutting into the thin plastic of the leg. After that, I sprayed the body black and also sprayed some parts white but because my lazy ass didn't want to unpack my spray booth, I landed up doing it in bad lighting, and I didn't realize how sputtery the paint was coming out, and spent like an hour trying to cover up all the oversprayed white parts. <sighs> Don't be lazy, kids. The rest was actually pretty simple. Just tedious. Some layered bone, some dirty up washes, some highlighting, a very faint stippling of blue, which isn't even visible now, and about 55 layers of glossy varnish. Because I ran out of UV resin, I need more money. And with that, it was done. Sir, I like it. Well, viewers, that was pretty fun. I hope you had fun watching. As usual, this video will be downloadable from Patreon and some high resolution stills, the mood board, some other stuff that you have never seen. As well as its corresponding episode of Mask Off, where I delve into the behind the scenes stuff as well as talk about upcoming projects and projects currently in the works. But I would genuinely like for you to tell me in the comments. What other kind of stuff you might like to see on Patreon that would make the deal worthwhile to you? Because in this economy, that seems like a tall order. Are we not all of us stretched thin over many subscriptions of things? It is the subscriptions dark age. But hey, if you don't want to subscribe to the Patreon, that's okay. Just as long as you like and subscribe to this channel, it costs you nothing. I mean, yeah, I can only be nice about it for so long. Clippity cloppity. F***ing subscribe to me! And also, do me a favor and get out there and vote for someone who's anti-corporate and pro-union How hard can that be? Because I am sick and tired of being broke! Yes, it's that season here in the US, where we all collectively try to pick a kick in the balls or a punch in the face over the next four years. <sighs> but it is also my favorite season of the year, October, the fall. 
Halloween. Unfortunately, I spent most of October making a symbiote pony, so didn't plan anything spectacular for this Halloween. What are you guys doing? I might have to reuse that Geralt costume. Or the Jackie Daytona? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, a happy Halloween to the rest of you, and I will see you in the next video. That's all I've got for today. Grab your and get out of here. Man, I was gonna do a whole bunch of cool stuff with this silly sludge for the reveal, but as it turns out, they have an expiry date. I found this out when it splooged all over everything when I tried to open it. Moral of the story, don't try to keep silly sludge for more than, uh, three years? <laughs> God, how I love this stuff. Moose blood. Crazy stuff blows your head off. It's the only reason this video got finished. And super freaky because then I started seeing the Venom 3 monster commercial tie ins. Not sponsored. I just like this stuff genuinely. Would be nice to get paid though. I mean, looky here, I've got a whole bunch of little thrift toy things kind of on display. And I'm just now realizing that while there's always a Venom somewhere nearby, this little case is like a damn spoiler for all the upcoming videos I got planned. Has this been influencing me subconsciously? I am inside your head.